Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to the Cabo Show. Uh, first, I would like to say to the Muslims, to my Muslim brothers and sisters, uh, Salaam Alaikum. Inshallah, may your Ramadan be successful. To my Christian brothers and sisters, I would like to say, I pray that your day is successful on purpose. I, I started that out because it's very important for people to understand I have no quandary or disagreement or I have no beef with church. I started off in church. My mother and father started off in church. They would take me on Easter with a suit. I was not a sweatsuit guy until later on in my life. And there were a lot of things that church allowed me to get through because that is where the God of my understanding wanted me at at that moment. Even though my religious, which is just the way of life, journey has took me to Islam because I am a student of Islam, not just a person of it, I realized that Christianity and Muslims have a lot of more in common than we do have differences which makes me come to the conclusion I never understood what the beef was about I also would like to bring some things to your attention because usually in my video a person will see me or imagery and, and I choose not to have any of that other than the pop-ups and all of those things that you get equipped with or accustomed to in editing. But I don't want my image to be present in this video because I can recall a time in my life that when God sent me someone, because of who he sent me, I did not listen. I'll say that again. My image is not in this video because I want people to concentrate on what I say and not who is saying it. So, I take the pride and the arrogance out of people wanting, or me wanting to see that I am the one who is bringing this information because this information is too important to be turned down or rejected based upon someone's opinion of the person who is speaking. This topic is the science of dating and the math of marriage. The reason that I say one is science and one is math because science is a tool in which people prove things with and math is a formula that has already existed and cannot be changed. It is a universal language. If an alien came from space and he was in a spaceship the one thing that he will have in common with us is he will have to have known math in order to build anything. He might call numbers different, but his math will be the same. Science changes. We learned that through the coronavirus. One day they say put a mask on, the next day they say don't. One day they say you come outside, the next day you say you don't. So I put science in front of dating because it will always be everlasting changes in the methodology of, of dating but marriage will always be 2 plus 2 equals 4 or 1 take away 2 equals negative 1 I am not speaking from a judgmental standpoint that one is greater than the other or I have the authority or license to speak on this matter. I am only speaking based upon my own interpretations of the experiences that I went through to come to the conclusion that I am into right now. And in hopes that through my interpretation of my experiences, I give people hope and I also give people freedom to be themselves in both categories.
dating is something that I suck at because my core principle was never able to separate loyalty from the one thing that you must have in dating was the ability to be in multiple situations at one time equally. I was never capable of doing that. Every time I was in a situation where I was dating someone, it was usually out of necessity. I was either lonely or horny or I just wanted to have the persona or the status of having multiple women only to be found by myself at nighttime feeling disgusted, dirty even, from sharing myself or my experiences or my soul with so many people, some unworthy. And I found myself being in a place where I was trying to figure out why do I keep feeling empty? Why am I, why do I keep not having a satisfaction that I'm looking for in these relationships? Because I was trying to be something that I never was. I heard the song pimping and wanted to be a pimp. I never was a pimp. It became fashionable to have 15 different girls, so I, I strived to my best and gave my all to be that, but inside, in my core system, I was never that. And each time I laid with a woman, and each time that I gave of myself, whether it was sexually or mentally or physically or just pure energy, my baby calls it vibration. Whether it was something that I didn't understand that every time I left that person, I left a part of me with that person. So even it was times that I was in bad relationships or bad dating experiences, I kept trying to figure out why I longed to be with this person, even though I knew deep down inside it was not going to go anywhere, or that it wasn't real, not understanding that I left that person with a part of me that myself will always crave to reiterate itself with. Meaning, when I lay down with a person, I enter or give them part of my soul. So regardless of whether I want to be with that person or not, in actuality, I want to reunite myself with the part of my soul that I left there. It's deep. So I found myself, even in times where I hated a woman, I desired her. Even in times when I said to myself, hey man, this bitch is no good for me. I desired her. And even in times where I know for a fact I was not good for a woman, I found that person desiring me, thinking that it was me that had that person wanting to be with me, not understanding that she wanted to reunite with the part that she left. I have a saying that if a man gets sex on the top of a church, the roof of a church, he will be called the pimp and the girl will be a whore. I beg to differ. Both of them are nasty and disgusting and they are both whores. Even though my past, the qualifications of something should not be determined based upon gender or race. So, if you are a man and you find yourself in a situation where you are able to lay with multiple people and be around multiple people and give yourself with multiple people, then you must understand that you are no better than a girl who you talk about who has sex with a couple of your homies. You are no different. Y'all both nasty. And I find myself in that situation and having to to chastise my own self because 
I was really doing it trying to be cool. That's ultimately where 90% of the stuff we do comes down to. We're trying to be cool. We're trying to be hip. We're trying to be relevant. Unbeknownst to people, because I know for a fact people, this is why I did not want me to be present in this video. I know for a fact that when people hear this video and people who know me intimately will say, dude, you are a hypocrite. I am not. Because of my uncomfortability with being promiscuous, I've never had a lot of relationships in my life. In actuality, I can count the girlfriends that I had in my life, the significant ones on my hands. But I felt as though if I showed that part of me, I would be a lame. I'd be cool or something wrong with dude. Why dude don't want to have sex with everybody want to have sex with him? This nigga's something wrong. He ain't saying something. Something wrong. This nigga gay. Something's up. And I always feared that. So I would go outside myself trying to do something that I was no good at. That's why I always got caught. And in getting caught, not only do I become the thing in which I don't like, I give the person who I'm with the rare opportunity to have evidence and ammunition that this nigga is not real. He told me he loved me, he don't love me. He cheated on me. Not knowing that I probably did love that woman, but I love the opinion that people had about me more than her. And I transgressed against that relationship many times over for that specific reason. If that makes me weird that I do not want to sleep with multiple women, then I am weird. If that makes me strange that I do not date women, I date women with the intentions of marriage, then I am strange. If it makes me strange that I've been in love multiple times and whether I hurt them or they hurt me, I still seek it. Then I am strange. Very quickly, let's talk about the math of marriage. I can truly say to you right now, without a shadow of a doubt, I've been married once. And Regardless of the turmoil that I might have experienced during that marriage, and I'm not even speaking about whether it was her or me, I'm just talking about life in general and myself. The struggles that I had myself, the struggles that I went through myself, the jihad, that's why my name is Jihadi. Jihad means it's not blowing yourself up in, in the bomb. It's the spiritual warfare that you have between yourself and good and evil. Because of my personal jihad, I found myself many times needing blessings from a God that I ignored or did not pay attention to. And to say it in a way that the youth and slang might be appropriated for this situation, Specific situations, my blessings hit different when I was married. Things that I went through and got out of was because the sanctity that I was in caused my blessings to be, it needed to be manifested and multiplied because it, my blessings needed to impact more than just myself. Some people might regret their marriage. I do not. I regret the part that I played in my marriage ending. The things that it done to my children. The things that it done to myself, my integrity, my fortitude. And why right now, if I do not have intentions on marrying you, we are not doing nothing. We are not dating. We are not doing nothing. We could be friends. We can go have fun. 
But we ain't doing nothing else because I am wasting my damn time dating a situation that already has the conclusion that it will not be something special or significant. This is what I'm trying to explain to people. I refuse to date somebody for 10 years and that person obviously does not have any intentions on marrying me because it don't take 10 years to figure out whether you want to or not. I'm sorry. I was a slave of time. I refuse to be a slave of time. I'm not going to be a slave of time again. It does not. Society has tricked us into believing that time is something that should be equated or entered into the math of our success relationship wise. That is a lie. I have had more success with people I just met than people I knew forever. I have met people who came into my life who was not my family in real life, but did things for me that my family did not. So time and titles have nothing to do with it. I'm just saying that sometimes you have to get to a place in your life where you say, I am too old to be playing games. Do I want to be 50 years old with a sweatsuit on inside a bar trying to hit on a girl? When I look around and people have been married for 10, 15 years, even though on the outside it might not appear that those two people have what you want to acquire, but they have the one thing that you do not. It is better and it is impossible to achieve by yourself what you can achieve with someone who is in the same predicament that you're in, that's trying to reach the same goals that you're in. It is impossible for me to believe that one person can lift an object better than two. If life is an object and you have no one to carry that shit with, you are going to realize something way, way more faster than someone who's in a relationship that's a meaningful one. And I'm not saying that dating is wrong. What I'm saying is everyone is not where I'm at where like I ain't dating no more. Either we getting married, we ain't doing nothing. I'll be by myself forever. I don't care. I'm not wasting my time. That is the one commodity I have no, I cannot have to where as though I can depend or waste it. Time is not something present or time is not something old to no individual. You can play with my money. You can play with me. You can play with my emotions. You cannot play with my intelligence and you cannot play with my time. So if I can't see myself Spending my life with you it is impossible for me to be okay with spending my time with you. I did not wait till I'm in my 40s to start saying I want to date now. I want to be a whore. I ain't never been a whore in my life. I want to be a whore now. You are an idiot. Because being a whore at 40 is getting you nothing and nowhere else that being a whore at 20 will get you. It's gonna get you the same thing. The only difference is you ain't got that time that you had at 20. You ain't have it then. So once again, this is not a judgment. This is not something that I am speaking on trying to put blame or doubt or shame on one thing or the other. I am not a counselor. I am a person who has came to the conclusion that is nothing wrong with me saying I do not want to be a whore. I do not want to sleep with multiple women. I do not want to have eight, nine girlfriends. I don't want that shit. If it takes me to be by myself rather than be with 15 different people trying to find happiness in those 15 people, when I need to really find happiness in myself, then that's where I'll be. So, as I look at the time, this is way longer than I wanted it to be, but hopefully people will be able to see my growth if they cannot see my face. Hopefully people will be able to see and understand the way I move if they was never involved in my movement. 
and hopefully is a man out there that feels ashamed that he wants to be with one woman that will have the heart to walk up to that woman and ask her to spend the rest of his life or their life with each other without trying to be cool or trying to be hip or trying to be like the videos and and the people and all of these things and I know strangely enough what people don't understand is the stuff that is in my songs or in my company is entertainment dude it's entertainment And if you don't get that about music or, or, or experiences or people talking, then you don't understand life. Everything that you see is not a visible, visible or verbal representation of what you need to be. Stop being a follower. Be yourself even if you are weird. Even if you are different, be yourself. And if you want to be a whore, just be one. But do not complain about the result that you get at the end. Thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for taking this time to uh, hear me, first of all. But then also to deep in, to dive deep into the corners of my imagination and, and my reality. Because I feel better. I am not strange. I am not weird. I am just someone who refuses to be a whore again. I don't want that. For myself, I have sons. I don't want them to grow up and think that it's something wrong for them to want to spend the rest of their life with someone or to be in a monogamous relationship. And I don't want my sons to wake up in the morning and say they are ashamed of the fact that they are promiscuous. Everyone has to lay in their own bed and indulge in their own pleasures. I just choose that these are mine. Thank you for coming out to Cabo One.